everyone, it's Tammy, and today we are going to do an exploding card, and I'm pretty excited about this because I have done one a while ago, and I totally forgot about it, and then I saw it again, um, and I thought, oh yeah, I need to do that again. So I have recently relearned how to do it, but this is such a cool card, I really like it. So the first thing that you want to do is cut a piece of cardstock, and this is going to be eight and a half, I think that's right, by four and a quarter. So you cut it at eight and a half by four and a quarter, and then you score it in the middle, which makes it scored at four and a quarter. So it is four and a quarter square. And then I cut a piece of Whisper White to go on top at four inches square. And then you can decorate the front however you want. The card is going to open like this and it will have an exploding inside. So I kind of like the recipient to know that this is how you open it as opposed to this. And if you wanted to make yours open like this, I'm sure that you could. You just have to play with how you do the inside. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and put this down. I'm thinking as I'm going, I haven't really prepared the front of it. But I thought one way that would help the recipient to know that this is the bottom that she needs to open it like this would be to take a piece of cardstock and uh, put a little punch on it. Or er, sorry, that was underneath my tripod. And I'm just going to take this uh, scalloped dot punch that I got at I think my local hobby store, I'm not even sure where I got this. It could have been from Stampin' Up, but if it was, it is retired. And I just need to throw these little things away. I always put a scrap piece of paper under these because those little dots are so tiny that if you don't, You'll, you can have them everywhere. And sometimes you still do. I mean, look, there's one that got away right there. And this is the Stampin' Up! Piercing Mat. This is an awesome thing to have. If you want to use your paper piercer, you can. You can stick it right in. Um, but I like to use it when I'm using my poly, polyphotomer stamps that um, I'm stamping directly onto cardstock because it needs a little cushion underneath it sometimes to make the stamp turn out exactly whole. So I like to use this for that. And let's see, this one is cut at four and a quarter, so I might cut it down just a little bit and then put it like this is what I'm thinking. So let's go ahead and do that. I will cut a quarter inch off. And then I will put it something like this. And I might even put a ribbon here. I didn't get a ribbon out, but let me grab some ribbon. Let's see, I think I'll do some pretty purple. my ribbon on a ribbon holder that I got for my birthday from one of my friends. Thank you, Lynn. And I just had to go and grab some. I'm going to tie a bow, so I got kind of a lot. So I'm just going to make this big enough to fit over this, but I'm not going to stick it down yet because I think I might put some white on top of it. I'm just trying to figure out how I want to do it. So I'm going to cut this down to four inches as well. And I think this is how I'll do it, something like this. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this bottom piece to this top piece. Well, 
like so. And it's okay if it's not covering the whole thing because I don't really mind. And then I'm going to take this, which is the closest color that I have to um, Wisteria of Wonder. And I just got some right there. I don't know how I even did that. Before I put this down, I'm going to go ahead and stamp on it. And I am using the stamp set called, what is it called? What I Love. This was one of the celebration stamps. I do love this stamp set. And it's a three stamp, or they call it a two stampin', but it has three different stamps that you can use. I just adore this stamp set. So let's see. And to do it, it's best to have three different shades of the same color which would make sense, I suppose. And then, I don't know, there's probably a way that you should do it with the colors, the deepest and darkest should be one of them. And you know, and I, in my preference, I have to think about it for a second. I think I like the lightest to be this one and the darkest to be this one. So that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to take my block the lightest to be this one, so I think that that might be this one, which is also not a Stampin' Up! color, but it's equivalent, I'm sure, to one of the Stampin' Up! colors. I just don't have all of them yet. Give me time, and I'm sure I will. Now, with these stamps, if you can see, the they are acrylic, so if you want to stamp again, you can if you didn't get it inked up. And then you can just line it up. If you look right through it, you can see where you were. Line it up, and then you need to stamp. And this is what I'm talking about with this. If you push pretty good, you have a nice um, something to push against. See how it's like flexible? It's not stiff, and it makes a much better print than if you had a stiff one. And then do you see where this, this little arrow is on my stamp? If I'm stamping it right here, my arrow is pointing directly up. So that means on my other two stamps when I'm stamping this, I also need to have my arrow pointed up. So I'm going to do this one next, I think, and I will point my arrow up. And I don't know which color I used. I think I used this one. I'm a dingbat. I don't even pay attention to which color I used. Or did I use that spring iris? Goodness, I can't even get this open. Maybe I use the spring iris. Because I think this one is more the color of Stereo Wonder. So we'll go with it. Just a little shade different, maybe. Or maybe it's the same color. I don't know. We're dealing with it. <laughs> You guys aren't helping me. I'm trying to teach you. <laughs> I can't tell which color I did already because I am a dingbat. And I had them both opened. So now finally I'll do this Blackberry Bliss. Now I know I haven't used this color. This color is wow. And it a little bit goes a long way. So I don't need very much. And then I'm just lining this up again. One thing I love about this kind of stamp set, like the watercolory, if you're not perfect, it's okay. And Lord knows that I am not perfect. But isn't that pretty how it turns out? And I kind of think I did the same color twice in the middle, but I really don't know. I think I might do this two more times. I don't know. <clears throat> this is what I do when I stamp on my own because I don't know what I'm doing exactly. I'm going to put a piece of scrap paper underneath this. Actually what I'll do is stick this under my scrap paper. Okay, so now I'm going to start with I'm starting with Lilac Mist. I'm saying that out loud so that we all know. Starting with Lilac Mist. And then 
I'm moving to whatever color this is. <laughs> Arrows at the top. Yeah, I probably did the same color twice last time. Arrows at the top. Oh, it's just so cute. I love this kind of stamping. Oh, whoops, I'm doing the big part. Arrow at the top just to keep it consistent. Since I'm starting a new flower, it really doesn't matter if I had the arrow at the top on this one or not, but. cat's running around so if you hear something that's what it is it's my kitty cat being silly cat oh those are so cute I love the way these stamp isn't that just adorable I think I should do one more over here don't you or maybe two because the law of odd numbers it's just more attractive to your eye so we'll do one more over here. Maybe two more. Oh, did I just do the same? <laughs> <laughs> second one same as the first one. Oh, dingbat see what I mean these stamps are forgiving and thank goodness they are huh <laughs> see and I think if I put one more right here it will look a little better so that is what I shall do, and this time I will try to make it the right colors, and I won't use the same piece over again, because that's what I did on that one. I don't know if you guys caught that. I took this piece off, or I just stamped it like this, then I took it off, and then I put it back on and stamped with this one. because I'm a mess. Yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to take my little sentiment. I think I'm gonna send this to my sister-in-law. And I love her, she's awesome. So it says, know what I love. And I'm gonna do that in this Blackberry Bliss. Know what I love. And then you open it up and it'll say you. So I have my handy dandy stamp and scrub here, which thank God for it. I do love this. If I had to say things that you were my go-to tools, I would definitely say a three by three block, my stamp and scrub, my cutter, and now I have not used the Stampin' Up! cutter, so I can't speak for that one.
but I know that this one has a, <laughs> look at me, that's not clean or anything, is it? I know that this one has a metal guide wire, and I love that about it. I don't know if the Stampin' Up! one does or not. I will have to research that. And then um, a bone folder. Yeah, I think those, and ink. I think those are like my very much essential tools. I use these every day. Did I clean all of my stamps? I don't know if I did or not. I'll go through them one more time just to be sure. I know I did. I know I did that one, and I know I did the Know What I Love one. So there. Whoops, I didn't rub that through the dry side. So there we go. And that way this will show her that she needs to open it this way. I love her, but she's kind of dumb, and if I didn't tell her that, she'd... <laughs> I'm teasing. She is not kind of dumb. She's a smarty McSmarterson, which is the only reason I can tease her about it. And then I'm going to put some Stampin' Dimensionals on the back of this because I like them. And I'm also going to put my ribbon on, so... This is kind of a big piece that's being lifted, so I'm putting two in the middle. Okay, so now I have this, and I'm going to put it, I think I'll put it up here, and how I'm going to do that is just with some tape here. Put tape there, put tape there. It's kind of a cheater way to do it, but it works and I love it. And then I don't want it to go on my dimensional because I don't want that to cover it up. So I'm just putting some more tape down and I'm just going to fold that over like that. And I will do the same thing on this side. Fold it over like that. Get it out of the way of my dimensional. So I can put my dimensionals down. I hope you guys understood why I did that. Because the ribbon was covering my dimensional. And if I had the ribbon still over the dimensional right now, the dimensional wouldn't stick to the paper because it's sticking to the ribbon. And then it would kind of defeat the purpose of the dimensional. So I just folded my ribbon over with a little bit of my tape so that the dimensional is showing. So now it will stick nice to, nicely to the paper. Like that. Then I will take my ribbon, stick it through. I think I have enough to make a bow. This thick ribbon is from Hobby Lobby. Just messing with it a little bit to make it the way I want it. Straighten out this part a little bit. Okay, now. My bow is going to be wonky. And I'm taking my big, nice craft scissors and I'm going to cut these at an angle. Which angle? This angle. So, this angle. I 
Remember to cut it a little shorter than, or a little longer than you think you want it because you can always cut it shorter, but you can't make it longer. That's a big old bow, but it's cute. Yeah, I think I like it. Okay, so that's done. And now we're gonna work on the inside, which is gonna be so exciting. I'm gonna leave my scrap piercing pad under here, but I'll kind of do that so you guys can see it and know that I'm actually using it. And before we get started, I'm gonna have a drink of my coffee. Oh, it's nice and cold now, <laughs> which I don't really mind, but it's not exactly what I wanted. Oh, and I better cover up this Blackberry Bliss before I get it all over. I want this to be, how big do I want this to be? An eight by eight square. So if it's eight by eight and a half by 11, I know I need to cut off a half an inch on that side. And then on this side, I need to cut off what? Eight, nine, 10, 11, three inches. So instead of taking out the arm, <laughs> I'm calculating it backward. So take it half an inch off this side. And this is just regular plain copy paper, which is also another reason why the piercing mat is much needed. Now what you'll do is you'll take a piece of post-it note and just put it down in the middle. And I don't know, you can make it as big or as small of an area as you want, but you need at least, I don't know, at least an inch square that you uh, post off in the middle so that you won't get anything on it. And I honestly eyeball it. And here's my cat. <laughs> Fuzzy. <laughs> you crack me up. A little attention seeker. Oops, sorry, I'm moving my thing. Yeah, I'm not getting it in the middle. Let me. It's not because I'm distracted at all. No. That wouldn't be it. That looks like the middle, so I'm liking that. So you just leave that there, and I'm going to try to get my cat to go, okay. And then now we're going to stamp outward from here out to the edges. And you can use whatever stamp set your heart desires. You can do a two stampin' set, you can do a one stampin' set, you can do whatever you want. I am going to take this one that I did in the Blackberry Bliss and I'm going to use it in the one that I think is closest to Wisteria Wonder. And I'm going to use this and just start stamping. And you want to kind of get it in on the post-it, but you don't want to, um, I mean, you wouldn't stamp directly on the post-it, like in the middle, because you're going to take that off. And you could do more than one color. You could make it as many colors as you wanted. That would be really pretty, actually. If I hadn't already gotten so far into this, I would add a different color. going to put some green leaves around so that it will look a little bit like uh, there's more than one color it will be a little less monochromatic So with this card, I really just wanted to show you the technique since I'm using some non-stampin' up stuff and some retired stuff. Really, I want you guys to know that you can use anything. The 
This is definitely more about the technique than it is the card. And kind of, I like to give you guys an idea. Oh, I need to re-ink this if I have any. If not, yay, it's time to buy Wisteria Wonder. <laughs> I've not been letting myself buy things that I already have because that's just silly and I don't want to waste my money. Now, I love the Stampin' Up! products and as a demonstrator, I would love to have everything Stampin' Up! but it's just not real right now. So, you know, I will get there one day and as I need it, I will purchase. So, I need to check to see if I have a refill for this, but if I don't, then I will. I don't know what the heck it keeps. Sometimes weird stuff just falls on your desk. Well, and I have my window open, so that doesn't help. Now that is an explosion of flowers. So I'm going to take my pear pizzazz and I'm going to take the leaf set that was in here I think I'm gonna use this one let's see what else is in here you know what I think I'm going to use this one instead And I'm just going to go around and put little green leaves wherever I feel like, randomly throughout the paper. I kind of started out going on the edge and then I was going to go in, but sometimes I'm just going in when I'm feeling like it. Pretty good. Now the fun part. You guys are gonna like this. I'm gonna clean off my stamps real quick because I am kind of anal and I know I am. The first part is admitting it. And I think I've already cleaned all the others, didn't I? And I don't think I did this one in here. There we go. Okay, so now all of these are clean. I just need to put them away. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to first take off this post-it. Oh, and I guess I need, I'm not quite done, am I? I need to stamp you in here in Blackberry Bliss. You know what I love? This one goes here. This one goes here. This one goes here. And this one goes here. And this one needs to come out. And needs to go here. And this needs to go here. I'm going to put it right here. And I'm going to clean off my little U. I love these stamps. This kind of stampin' might be my favorite kind, like the two-part watercolor kind of look. I don't know why I really 
enjoy that. It's just so pretty. Now I could go in and do a second color if I wanted to, but I don't really think it's needed. And what a mess that would be to try to line them all up. But Okay, so the first thing you do is you go in like so, so corner to corner. And you most definitely need your bone folder for this. I'm gonna get rid of those. Oops, I don't know if I did it straight, yikes. You wanna do it straight? <laughs> And then you open that up and then you go corner to corner the other way and you open that up and you turn it over and you do side to side And then you open it up and you go the other way. And then, so then now you push down in the middle of these two and as you fold it up, you'll see that it kind of automatically wants to come up. That's perfect. You just let it fold and you use your bone folder. I like to go on both sides of this one. Now you will take, there's four corners. See how it like comes open like this? You're going to take these four corners and fold them into the middle. Actually, if you use your grid paper, if you have that, it's kind of nice to use that so I can know that I bring them in to this line. And you burnish the edge and you do the same thing to this side and burnish the edge and then you fold it over or turn it over and you do the same thing to this side I have to scratch my eye sorry and then you do the same thing it kind of looks like a little diaper kind of and you want to get those you know pretty good and then you open it up again like this and then you take these corners and you fold them in and you burnish that again because you want these to be pretty good and same with this one fold them both in and burnish that and then you can open it up so it's your diamond shape again or whatever triangle shape then when you open this up these little triangles you push towards you or push push in so there's two on each side you just push them in so you're going to end up with like a home plate looking piece of paper I think that's home plate. Yes, I, yeah. <laughs> Why do I even try a sports reference? Because that's what it looks like to me. I did play some softball <laughs> many years ago. Okay, so this is the most ex fun, ex exciting part. You're going to put this onto a card and it will open up like this. Isn't that cool? So here we go. I like to use either Fast Fuse or the Tear and Tape. And I have tear and tape out because I had a fight with my fast fuse and it doesn't like me anymore. So I will use my tear and tape because it still loves me. And I'm getting it on here pretty good because I have a feeling people are going to open and close this card quite a bit. So you want to make sure that you that it can stand the power. And I'm going to go ahead and do both sides just because I would need to eventually anyway. And since this has the strip that I can pull off, I'm going to go ahead and do it while I have it right here. 
If I were using fast fuse, I would only do one side and then I would stick it down and then I would do the other side. But because I'm using this with the backing, I'm good. Another reason why fast fuse, why this is better than fast fuse. Right, tear and tape, you're my friend. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to the tape. So what? Okay, so now you're going to take the card base. This is so cute. Oh my goodness, we just made that. Yay! And tear off your top on one side only. Or if you've used your fast fuse, just you can obviously skip this step. And now you're going to put this in. Now I'm going to make sure I have it open the right way. You, yes. Because you would hate to do it backward, but you're going to stick this down point side to the middle. And just want to even it out amongst the sides. And I like to just close it and push. And then we will take these off. Or this is where you would put fast fuse if you wanted to do it that way. You just want something kind of strong is the reason you use tear and tape or fast fuse. I know that my uh, glue gun is pretty strong, but I'm not as confident in that as I am in this, so I will go with something I know will work. And then now I'm gonna push down the top. And then are you ready, are you ready, are you ready? Yay! Isn't that cute? Oh my goodness. I know that your recipient will love it. I know my sister-in-law will get a kick out of it. And then I left myself a little bit of room here to write Love Tammy. And if you want to put a little note here, you're, you can. So there we go. I just think it's adorable. I love this technique. And I'm glad that I was reminded of it. And I know that fold is called something, but I don't remember what it is. I think it's an Egyptian something, but I can't remember. That's way in the back of my card catalog of my head. <laughs> I just remember I liked it. And I know why now, because oh, I'm having fun just opening it and closing it. <laughs> Wee! Okay, well, I guess that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you try it. And if you do, please let me know. I'd love to see it. Thanks. Bye.